Hey there, I'm Joe Weems. Before we get into the video, I want to remind you about NGConf 2023 happening in Salt Lake City, Utah on June 14th and 15th. Head over to ngconf.org to check out the speakers, check out the talks, and to get your ticket before they all sell out. We'll see you there. Yeah, thank you. So I guess you know this game. It's quite a funny game if you ask me. It's about pulling out those bricks without destroying the tower. And if you ask me, the Angular team is really good at this game. Because <laughs> this is what they are doing all the time. So, I mean, think about Ivy. They switched out the whole compiler and the runtime and we didn't get any breaking changes. The tower is still there. And now they just did it again with standalone components. They made ng modules optional and still everything works. You can even use existing code using modules with standalone components. And everything you need to do is just to set this flag to true, this standalone flag, and to import the compilation context. The compilation context, or as I call it, the neighborhood of the component. Everything the component is allowed to use is in there in this imports array. For instance, other components, directives, or pipes. And this is really quite amazing, but also quite easy, isn't it? However, this brings several additional questions to the table. Questions like, what does all of this mean for my architecture? And this is what I want to answer here. And for this, I have prepared two parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about routing and lazy loading. I think this topic is quite interesting because historically, routing and lazy loading was quite connected to NG modules. And besides this, the router is the linchpin of your application. It holds together all the parts, and so it influences the architecture. That's the first part. The second part is about structuring your application with standalone components, or to put it in another way, it's about modularization without modules. So let's have a look into it, what that means. Before we start, let me introduce myself. I am Manfred, I'm a trainer and consultant for Angular. I'm focusing on Angular for enterprise scale development. I'm quite connected to the Angular community. I live in Austria, do a lot of stuff in Germany, and I'm always happy to work together with people around the world, which is quite easy currently because we are heavily using remote technologies for at least two years. Okay. Let's get started with the first thing I've prepared for you. It's about routing, lazy loading, all of this without NG modules. So perhaps you've seen it, when going with standalone components, you don't need an app module anymore. You can just bootstrap your standalone component by pointing with bootstrap application to your app component. And when doing so, you can provide some providers, and those are the providers you used to put into your app module before. And when doing this, you could, in theory, use something like this here. The bridging function, as I call it, the bridging function import providers from. It allows you to import providers from existing modules. For instance, for the router module that is configured with for root. It takes your root routes, and with import providers from, you just get them over into the world of standalone components. I think we will see this bridging function quite a lot in the beginning. But then, sooner, we will see it less and less, because libraries will more and more provide helper functions, helper functions like this here. This is what we got last week with Angular 14.2, a function called provide router. You pass your root routes, and you pass additional features in terms of with functions, with this, with that. 
and this makes everything more tree shakeable. It's really cool as a side effect of getting standalone components, the router gets more tree shakeable because functions are super tree shakeable. If you use those with functions, it's in there. If you don't use them, it will be part of your bundles. The thing is, I think this is not just a nice API the router provides. I also think this is a naming pattern a lot of other libraries should embrace. That means we as the Angular developers, when we add a new library, we should look out for a provide XYZ function and perhaps we also look out for a with this with that function. Okay, this is about bringing the root routes, the root routes into play. However, what's with lazy loading? Well, the good message here is that we now can directly point to a lazy router configuration. Look here. Here I have load children. And with load children, I'm not pointing to another module that in terms points to my child roots. No, I directly point to my router configuration, to the configuration with the child routes. So one unnecessary indirection less. How cool is that? And if you want to go more fine-grained, you can even use load component to directly point to your standalone component you want to lazily load. If we look into such a routing configuration, it might be a routing configuration with child routes or it might be a routing configuration for the root routes, then you find a new provider section in there. It's optional but it allows you to define your providers for this very route and for all its child routes. Those are the providers you used to put in your lazy modules before, but as modules are gone, now we put it here. The thing is, if you do something like this, you get a new dependency injection scope, and the scope spans over the current route and the subroutes. And this is quite amazing, because in the past it was more confusing. In the past, every time you did lazy loading, you got a new scope. And when you did eager loading, you didn't get a new scope. But now it's under your control. Place this here and you get a new scope regardless, regardless if you use lazy loading or not. So it's more straightforward, less confusing. And needless to say, when you do something like this, those services are lazy loaded with your lazy roots. But if possible, use provided in route. I did not know it. Alex told me this week, even when going with provided in route, it can be lazily loaded. If it's only needed there in this lazy section, then it will be lazily loaded. However, there are situations where you need this, especially when you want to configure something. For instance, if you want to configure a feature slice for your Ensure X store. By the way, also last week for this, we got new provide functions from the Ensure X team. We have now provide state for providing a feature slice and provide effects for providing effects for this feature slice. So this is a quite nice use case. Yeah, and now I want to show you all of this in action. Let's have a look to a little tiny example I've prepared. It's a simple example. It's about booking flights. You can search for flights. Sometimes you even find flights. And sometimes you even see it on the screen. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> and yeah, it's nothing I would call home about, but it's complex enough to show all the concepts I want to show you. When we look into the source code, this is the source code, then we see this main file. So here I'm doing development at scale, scale in terms of font size. And here you see, <laughs> I, have my, <laughs> I have my bootstrap application function and it gets my app component. Also, I'm importing stuff from the HTTP client module. I need this bridging function for it at least now. Future will give us something else. And then here I'm providing my root routes with provide router, plus I'm activating some of the additional features of the router with those web functions. So let's jump into those routes here. 
And here we see that I'm doing lazy loading. Lazy loading with low children, and when doing so, I directly point to another routing configuration. No unnecessary indirection anymore, I directly point to this very routing configuration. Plus, if I want, I can also use load component to directly point to a standalone component. This is a bit more fine-grained, the other situation here is a bit more coarse-grained. It depends upon what you need. Now, let's have a look into this configuration, F12. Here we see another routing configuration. I have my flight booking component, I have some child routes, and I am providing some services, in this case one more time for NGRX, for this very lazy section of my application. Okay. So let's come to the second question. The second question is, what does all of this mean for structuring my application? How can I subdivide my application into pieces without NG modules? And well, the first answer is quite easy. Just go with folders. You can just subdivide your application with folders, but you can do better. You can add a barrel which is just an index.ts file. Some people call it public API.ts because it's your public API. Everything you are exposing here is intended for other parts of the application to be used. Everything you are not exporting here is your little tiny secret. And trust me, it is good to have little tiny secrets because Everything you keep a secret can be changed easily afterwards. You can rewrite it, you can throw it away, you can buy it from a third party vendor. But everything you are exporting here should be backwards compatible somehow. Otherwise, you break the work of other people, other people using your library. And if you want to have some friends in your company, trust me, it's not the best idea to break other people's work. So please stick with this here. And this shows that barrels are the better replacement for NG modules. They give you a real public API. Plus, it is just using vanilla JavaScript. There is no special functionality in there. It's just traditional ECMAScript. Okay, let me show you a demonstration for this. Let's move in my application. Here we see my booking folder, which contains my booking use case. And there I have this barrel. And this barrel is exporting everything other parts of the application are allowed to use. If they use anything else, well, it's their risk. It might change, but I guarantee that those routes will be in place and those routes will be changed in a backwards compatible way. But one more time, we can do even better. If you ask me, and I'm not saying this because Jeff Gross has a lot of compromising pictures of me. I'm saying this because I want to say it. <laughs> I say this because I believe into it. The next logical step would be to go with Annex workspaces. Because, <laughs> thank you. Because perhaps you've seen it, Annex easily allows you to subdivide a huge application into libraries. And at first glance, a library is just a folder with source code and a barrel. So it is what we had before, but it is much more. For instance, you have this dependency graph that shows you how everything is interconnected with each other. And this is vital, because when doing a huge application, it is important that you make sure that not everything is intermingled with everything else. If everything is coupled to everything else, you change something here and break something there, and this is, of course, a disaster. So this allows you to maintain the overview and to prevent coupling. But there are even more features. For instance, you can generate path mappings. That means all your libraries get a beautiful name. You don't need relative paths like, you know it, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, Dot, slash, dot, dot. I also call it the Vienna Vault style because of dot, 
dot slash dot dot. No, you don't need it. You get a beautiful name. It almost looks like the name of an NBM package. That's one benefit. Another benefit is you get your initial barrel generated. You don't need to do it by hand. There is even a linting rule that prevents you from grabbing into the private parts of your library. So perhaps you have a colleague who is a bit risky and directly uses private parts of your part of the application. They are bypassing the index DS. And with this linting rule that an X team gives you, this is not possible anymore. Plus, there are further restrictions making sure that not each and every library is allowed to access each and every other library of your system. You can enforce rules which parts are allowed to be interconnected with other parts. And when using all of this, it looks like this here. You can import stuff from your libraries, you get this beautiful name, no Vienna style vaults on the right side. Plus, if you use something you are not intended to use, you get this error message. And I really love this error message. In this case, it tells us, hey, it looks like you are in the domain booking and you are only allowed to access further stuff from the domain booking and from the domain shared. But don't use stuff from over here. Don't use stuff from the domain check-in of your application. You are not supposed to do it. <laughs> yeah, and this makes sure that you don't have any broken windows. This makes sure you can enforce your very architecture. The architecture will be there. No one will violate it. How cool is that? By the way, if you want to know more about this, I have this free ebook. Feel free to download it from here. Okay, let's come to a conclusion. What did we see today? First of all, we saw that using the router is a piece of cake. There is this provide function, provide router, and you can even activate further features with these with functions, and those features are super tree shakeable. We have seen that now you can directly point to a lazy router configuration. No unnecessary detour via an NG module directly point to your subroutes. Also, we have seen that folders and barrels are your friends, especially barrels. It's a very simple way, but also a very effective way for getting a stable software architecture using barrels to get a public API. Plus, we have seen that NX might be the next logical step because NX not only gives you folders and barrels, it gives you the dependency graph, and it gives you libraries and constraints. It makes sure that not every library is allowed to access each and every other library, something you need for sure when implementing a huge application. I've already updated, updated, uploaded my material to my blog. You find it here. And if you want, follow me on Twitter to stay in contact. Thanks for having me.